Again, our word of communion today comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 10. We can call it from death to life. So today we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Amen. or what traditionally we call Easter. Now, as some of you probably know, when Jesus resurrected from death to life, it was the first day of the week. That was a Sunday. And from as early as the second century, many Christians worldwide have celebrated Jesus' resurrection on a Sunday. As I was preparing this word of communion, for today, the Lord really put on my heart Romans 8, so I spent some time uh, there just kind of um, reflecting, meditating prayerfully. And uh, the Lord drew me to verse 10, which says, If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So I want you to look at that verse. The second word of that verse is the word if. Now, whenever you see an if in the Bible, it's important. You see, grammatically, there's different kinds of ifs, and I'm not going to get into a grammar lesson, so I'll just tell you that here, the word if introduces a true statement. So you can reread it by replacing the word if with since. And then verse 10 says, since Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So this is a true statement for all Christians. But what is that truth? Notice the two natures, body versus spirit. Notice the two states, dead versus life. And notice the two characters, sin versus righteousness. The idea here is this, for those of us who have trusted in Jesus, we have an earthly, fleshly, natural body that is spiritually dead as a result of our sinfulness. However, we also have the heavenly, eternal spirit indwelling us, giving us life as a result of Christ's righteousness. Amen. Now, the atheist who rejects God the agnostic who says we can't know God, the deist who believes God doesn't exist or believes God does exist but doesn't trust in Jesus, the morally decent person of any religion who rejects Jesus, and the Christian all have in common that our natural bodies are dead as a result of sin. See, you're not special. Even if you're a Christian, you're not special. Christians are like everybody else. We have the same blood in our veins, the same greed in our bellies, the same selfish desires, and the same pride in our hearts. But there is a key difference because as sincere believing Christians, we have the Holy Spirit living in our hearts, making us spiritually alive as a result of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Now, I grew up in church and for me, what I remember about Easter was a very heavy emphasis on Jesus' crucifixion and death. On Good Friday, the, the youth group did this play, and it was a very dramatic play. Um, it had a big wooden cross that the lead character would actually carry down the aisle, and then the worship leader would sing an old song called Watch the Lamb. It was a very powerful experience. But then Easter Sunday came, and my brother and I would wake up, we'd go find our Easter baskets filled with candy and trinkets, we'd get dressed up in our Sunday best, we'd go to church, where all the adults would ask us about candy and the Easter bunny. Now, none of that is wrong per se, but somehow I missed that whole part about the importance of the resurrection. It wasn't really till I was older, really in high school, I started going to the sunrise service that I began to understand that Easter is about the resurrection, and the resurrection is just as important as the crucifixion. Yes. Now, as an adult, I'm still learning about why the resurrection is so important. So think about this. The resurrection is the proof that Jesus has the power to forgive sins. It's the proof that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, 
as he told Martha right before raising Lazarus. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, as he answered Thomas during the Last Supper. That as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. But Jesus did rise. And by rising from death, he triumphantly proclaimed victory that he just accomplished through the cross and the grave, securing victory over sin and death for every one of us. Now back to Romans 10. What does it say? Where is life? Or better yet, who is life? The Spirit is life. And here we find one of the many glorious truths about the death and resurrection of Jesus. When we trust him, we die spiritually to our sins and we are resurrected spiritually with Christ, made alive by the Holy Spirit. Now we could say a lot more things about that, the Holy Spirit and his work in our lives. But for today, celebrating our risen Savior, we celebrate also our own spiritual resurrection in him as fellow recipients of what's called the new covenant. Our birth in the spirit who indwells our hearts and breathes life into our souls as he comforts, corrects, and guides us daily in our new life in Christ. And so let's take communion together. We have these wonderful little cups. There's a top layer of cellophane you remove to get to that wafer. So of course the, the elements represent Christ and his death. The wafer is his body broken for us. Let's take and eat. And then you take the plastic tab to peel that back and get the juice. And you try without spilling it on yourself. And the blood represents, or, or excuse me, the juice represents the blood of Jesus Christ shed for uh, remission of sins, but also it's called the blood of the new covenant, that new covenant that gives us the Holy Spirit. Thank you. So let's take and drink. Father, all we can say is thank you and continue to put on our hearts and remind us the glory, the beauty, the joy, the peace we have with you through our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ because of his death on the cross, but how much more so being resurrected with him to new life in the Holy Spirit that lets us call you Father. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.